Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. Today we'll be talking about electric vehicles and bi-directional charging. EVs aren't just consumers of power, but potential sources of it too. We'll break down the three main aspects of bi-directional charging. Vehicle to load, vehicle to home, and vehicle to grid. Each of these opens up a world of possibilities from powering up your home during an outage to supporting the grid during peak demand. Let's begin. Let's lay the foundation by starting off with what we all know, unidirectional charging. It's a straightforward process and it's how we charge our EVs today. With unidirectional charging, the flow of energy is a one-way street, much like refueling a conventional car with gasoline. You plug your EV into a charging station or at home, and the electricity flows from the grid into your vehicle's battery, powering it up for your next journey. The batteries on electric vehicles are huge and store a ton of energy to help you drive long distances. But what if we could use these big battery packs to power something other than the car? Cue in bi-directional charging. Bi-directional charging not only receives electricity from the grid, but also sends power back when needed. It enables a two-way flow of energy between the EV's battery and external devices, homes or the grid. Vehicle to load is the simplest and most common implementation of bi-directional charging. V2L technology enables you to use the energy stored in your EV's battery to power smaller electrical devices beyond the car itself. It's like having a generator built into your car. There are a couple of different implementations of V2L in EVs today. Some auto manufacturers like Ford, Rivian, Hyundai, and Kia, and a few others have regular US 120 volt outlets placed around the car. In the Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ionics, these can output up to 1800 watts, so they're capable of powering many household items, including some small appliances like a full-size refrigerator. On the trucks, they support higher amperages and are even broken up into separate circuits. The outlets on these trucks are made to be more capable so you can use power tools at a job site. One bonus feature on the Ionics and EV6 is their ability to use a V2L adapter. This adapter brings 120 volt to the outside of the car. I tried this out during our Kia EV6 review when I set up an outdoor Nintendo gameplay session with a projector. It was pretty neat and worked exactly as expected. Having outlets available like this is fantastic on the go, great in the event of a power outage to use the essentials, and it's helpful for outdoor events too. But what if you want to power more than just the essentials during an outage? Enter vehicle to home. V2H charging allows you to use the stored energy in your electric vehicle's battery to supply power to your home's electrical panel. This allows you to power up larger appliances like air conditioners, an electric stove, an electric dryer, and many more. Basically, you can use everything in your home as you normally would. While V2L has simple implementations in the car, V2H does require some equipment to be installed on your home. First and foremost, you need to have a V2H compatible EVSE. Ford seems to be paving the way for V2H in the United States, so we'll use them as our example. This wall charger is a bit special, and you might notice that it connects up using CCS. When charging the car, it uses the J1772 AC pins and acts as a regular wall-mounted EVSE. When sending power back to the house, it uses the DC pins at the bottom. The wall-mounted unit converts the power from DC to AC, providing power for the home. A grid disconnect will also need to be installed. This is a safety feature for linemen so your home doesn't end up backfeeding the grid while power is down. As an example, the F-150 Lightning is capable of outputting up to 19 kilowatts for home use, so you'd be able to run several appliances without having any issues. One of the great things about V2H and V2L is the fact that your car can power your house while being parked in the garage. You don't have to worry about tailpipe fumes like you would with an outlet on a gas car or a gas generator. In the simplest of terms, vehicle to home works very similarly to a home generator. Lastly, we have vehicle to grid. V2G is still in its infancy and aside from a few Nissan cars, it's not yet supported by any other manufacturers. The concepts are very simple though and will likely be available one day. V2G empowers your electric vehicle to become an active contributor to the electrical grid. Just as your EV's battery stores energy to power your drives, it can also release energy back into the grid when needed. When the demand for electricity is high and the grid is under strain, your EV can backfeed the energy it has stored. This helps alleviate the load on the grid during peak usage periods, preventing blackouts and ensuring a steady supply of power for everyone. This is almost identical to the concept Tesla has rolled out with their power walls called virtual power plant. 
Imagine a scenario where renewable sources like solar and wind generate an abundance of energy, but the demand at that moment is low. Your EV can absorb this surplus energy and store it until it's needed. This enhances the efficiency of the renewable energy sources, reducing waste and maximizing their impact. As I said before, the batteries in modern EVs are huge, and it would be great to be able to provide some of that stored energy back to the grid. As an example, a long-range Model S battery has a capacity of over 7 power walls, or in other terms, one Tesla Mega Pack equals about 38 or 39 Model S's. The battery tech is here, we just need to be able to tap into it further to assist our grid or power our homes. Worldwide, Nissan has been working on several vehicle-to-grid projects. Most recently, in 2022, Nissan approved bi-directional charging for use with Nissan Leafs in the United States working with Fermata Energy, a vehicle-to-grid services provider. These include bi-directional enabled Leafs for model year 2013 and later. It will use the FE15 bi-directional charger, but currently it's just for use at businesses. No at-home use options are available for this yet. Since it doesn't have a CCS port, it uses Chatamo, but works in the same way when discharging the car. V2G can also provide financial incentives to EV owners. Energy companies can compensate you for the energy you provide to the grid, effectively turning your electric vehicle into a revenue-generating asset. Vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle charging is another V2X idea that hasn't been implemented yet. Though due to the voltage differences between cars, I could see this being cost-prohibitive to install in a regular commuter car. I imagine that services like AAA or other roadside assistance companies will use this technology in their fleet. So do you really need all these features in your car? No, a lot of these features are nice to have, but not entirely necessary. Vehicle to load has the best implementation. It's literally just an outlet on the car. But if your car doesn't support vehicle to load, you can always buy a 12 volt inverter to power the essentials. Just make sure to check the wattage rating on your car's 12 volt outlet first. V2G and V2H are still evolving and the procedures for delivering power to the home or grid may change over time. Vehicle to grid has its complexities, but it should help us move over to a more sustainable grid. All of these help us to tap into our cars as power sources and provide useful or sometimes life-saving utility. Thanks for spending time with me today. Support our channel and check out our new store. We have Kaya stickers now. Kaya's my dog. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow us on social media. Learn more about EVs on my website at kaizev.com. That's all for now and happy charging.